this is part two of our 1.2 video series. We are still talking about quantitative data. The last video we talked about how to make stem plots and dot plots. Now we're going to be discussing how you describe this data. Okay? And any graph that you have, no matter what it is, always look for the overall pattern and for any striking departure. So anything that's different from that pattern. There's an acronym to help you remember the things that you should cover when you're discussing and describing quantitative data. You should always remember your SOCS. S-O-C-S. Those four letters stand for shape, outliers, center, and spread. Outliers isn't always going to be important, but you definitely want to have your shape, your center, and your spread. This video is going to focus specifically on shape, but I will briefly mention the other three but we will go into more details on those three in the next couple days. Okay, so remembering your socks. So talking about shape. When you describe a distribution's shape, concentrate on the main features. Look for any rough symmetry. And I use the word rough there because nothing in life, especially statistics, is ever exactly symmetrical, even stuff that you expect to be. So roughly symmetric is good enough for us or if there's any clear skewness, if it goes one way or another. So looking at this graph here, this is roughly symmetric, talking about just the shape. There are going to be three general shapes that we talk about. Either a graph is symmetric, skewed to the right, or skewed to the left. If it's symmetric, the right and the left sides of the graph are approximately mirror images. Again, approximately, more or less, so don't be too nitpicky. So this graph down here, not perfect, but I'd call it symmetric. It's about even on both sides from the center, if you will. Skewed to the right versus skewed to the left talks about which side of the graph is longer. So if it's skewed right, the right side of the graph is longer than the left side. So it kind of extends out more. And this graph here down in the middle is called skewed to the left. So this is what these definitions look like in terms of a uh, dot plot. These are all different dot plots. The next slide shows us a skewed right distribution if you're looking at a histogram longer to the right. So this would be skewed right. Next one is another dot plot. We have skewed to the left. Um, I remember it kind of silly. I think of, I don't know why, but I think of a dinosaur. And if I were to draw a curve over my data, I think about which direction kind of the tail goes. This is where my tail is. My tail is to the left, right? In this previous one, my tail is to the right. So that tells me which direction it is skewed. Something interesting to note, the mean of a data set is always pulled towards the tail. The mean is always pulled towards the tail. So that's something we'll talk about more later, but it's something kind of interesting. A couple other ways you can describe your shape. Um, unimodal, meaning there's only one mode, right? Mode being the number that appears the most often. Bimodal, there's two numbers that about appear the most often. Um, they don't have to be exactly equal in height, but you can, they kind of call them peaks. You look for peaks where it kind of mountains up. Multimodal, self-explanatory. We typically will only be talking about unimodal and bimodal but that's something you can use to describe your shape. So you can talk about your shape as far as, is it symmetric, right skewed or left skewed? You can talk about if it's unimodal or bimodal in shape. Uh, the other parts of socks is center. You can describe center by finding a value that divides the observations, so that half take larger and half take smaller. Uh, two ways you can do center, we can either do median or mean. Median is going to be best when it's skewed. Mean is best when it's symmetric. So if I'm looking at this graph down here, think about what shape this is. Well, it's kind of tailing to the left, so this would be skewed left. I would not call this symmetric. So since it's skewed left, I would probably find the median to describe the center of this. Another way you can describe the distribution is by talking about the spread. It tells us how much it varies, how much variability it is. So there are three different types of ways to describe spread. You can calculate the range of the data, the IQR, which stands for the interquartile range. We're going to talk about that later. Same with standard deviations. We'll talk about how you calculate those later. Okay.
So if I wanted to just quickly find range of this, my minimum value is at 1, my maximum value is at, I don't know, 4.3. So 4.3 minus 1, my range is 3.3 kilograms. Always include your units. And then outliers is our last one. It's any values that differ from the overall pattern. We are going to learn specific ways in order to find outliers um, later on. For right now, we can only identify things that might be potential outliers. Potential outliers. So like this guy kind of differs from the rest of the pack. Might be a potential outlier. So to put these into practice, these four attributes, shape, center, spread, outliers, take a look at this example. And we want to describe the shape, the center, and the spread. Are there any potential outliers? Include any context. So MPG stands for miles per gallon. So we must be talking about cars. So on your notes, leave some space and go through your socks. Talk about your shape, outliers, center, and spread for this particular distribution. Remember, distribution is just a fancier name for data. What's the shape of the data? This should also be a good reminder as to why we make graphs of things. Because if all I had was the raw data and I just had a bunch of numbers that weren't in any kind of order, it would be kind of hard to talk about the shape of the distribution. Okay? So that's your assignment. And we will pick up with more quantitative data next time.